Hey, how's it going? Um, earlier on today, we were discussing how you use machine within your DAW or DAW. Um, this is my preferred method of working, um, so I just thought I'd give a quick overview of on, on how I do it. There's no right or wrong way. Uh, this is just my preferred method of working. So as you can see, I've opened a uh, instrument track in Logic X, and we're just going to put machine on that. Native Instruments, Machine 2. I'm going to select Multi Output. Um, if you're trying to do this on an existing project and you've already selected Machine 2 as stereo, it's okay. You could just go in here, change it to Multi, multi Output, and it won't make too much of a difference. Um, shouldn't, shouldn't affect anything. Okay, and for the purposes of this, I'm just going to load up a preset. Let's just give this a quick spin. Okay, very basic house beat. And as you can see, I'm using six individual sounds um, or six pads. Okay, we can close machine for the second and open our logic mixer. And you can see our house kit channel is highlighted there with a little plus and minus box at the bottom, which you don't normally have. So this is where we're going to create six new mixer channel strips for each one of our sounds just by clicking the plus button one two three four five six let's just press play again okay so at the moment you can still see that it's only coming through the the, the first output and none of the sounds are rooted so if we open up machine Select this little icon here next to master, go to output, and it's this group button here. So I'm going to take the first sound to EXT, EXT2. Um, if I selected the kick for EXT1, it would still come through on that first track. I want it to come through on this aux one here, so it needs to be on two. And kick on three, hat, on four, clap, on five, snare, on six, open hat, on seven. Let's close that. So we now should see each one of those sounds coming through on each one of these new aux strips that I've created. Let me just uh, select all of those, just turn it down a little bit, there we go. Great, so if we solo this first one, it should just be our kick. I find it quite important to label these up at this point, I'll show you why in a little while. So we've got kick, kick two. Closed hat, clap, snare, open hat. Brilliant. So that's our uh, each individual sound routed through to each individual channel on the mixer. Um, okay, so next really is the MIDI. First thing I would do now is let's actually select all of these channels. You can do this by highlighting the first track, holding down Shift, highlighting the, the last one. They're all selected. If we go to Option and Create Tracks for Selected Channel Strips, let's just move the mixer out of the way. You can see it's actually created new tracks on the Arrange page for each sound. Just hit play. Brilliant. So we can see the <coughs> levels coming through there nicely. 
Fantastic, that's what we want. Okay, so now the MIDI. Let's open machine. Okay, so if we go to input, MIDI. First thing you need to do for each individual channel is switch on active. And if I just move this very slightly out of the way and select my kick, we can see here it's on MIDI channel 2. So kick, MIDI channel 2, kick 2, active, MIDI channel 3, closed hat, active, MIDI channel 4, clap, active, MIDI channel 5, snare, active, MIDI channel 6, open hat, you guessed it, active, MIDI channel 7. This should now enable me to drag the MIDI from machine into logic and let's put the MIDI on separate channels. And one thing that sometimes confuses me, it doesn't always put things in the right order. I'm not sure why it's done that. It may be that I've changed something in machine somewhere and it, it's getting confused. But um, this is why I said it was important to label up each individual lane within Logic because you can then very, very easily match these up and swap them around to where they need to be. So kick on kick. Closed hat needs to be down there. Open hat down there, kick two in there, clap there, and snare there. Next thing we need to remember to do one last thing if we just open machine one more time um, is select an empty scene. So we're only getting it triggered from the MIDI within Logic. So if I come over here, we're going to hear nothing. If I hadn't selected an empty scene there, let's go back. We're still going to get machine playing, even when there's no MIDI within Logic, which can get quite confusing. So select an empty scene. Let's move Logic, uh, move machine out of the way. There we go. So there we go. We've got each individual machine sound mapped into Logic on its own individual mixer channel and we've got the MIDI. So you now don't need to worry about using the scenes in machine to arrange. Um, you can do everything from within Logic itself. Um, you can open up each individual pattern, move stuff around, apply swing in Logic, which I find really, really handy because if you start applying swing in machine and you've got extra drums coming from Logic, trying to find uh, the right swing settings to, to, to match up with it can be a little bit difficult. Saying that, you can get some nice effects doing it that way as well, but this is just my preferred method. So there we go, using machine inside Logic X, um, my current method um, that I use and I hope you find that helpful. Much appreciate. See you again soon. Cheers.